Well, greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us for day two of the two-day fifth annual HPC AI Advisory Council Australia Conference. My name is Brian Sparks, and I'm the Director of Worldwide Operations for the Council and be today's moderator. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank everyone at POSI and NCI Australia for their partnership and support of this conference and its co-location within this week's POSI's PACER Conference, PCON 22. I'd also like to thank our media partners, HPC Wire, Inside HPC, Intersect 360, the next platform, and Scientific Computing for their ongoing coverage of the Council's worldwide conferences and activities. We have a robust agenda for the next three hours with great topics and speakers from POSI, Georgia Tech, the Department of Health Data Science, Intersect 360, and Doug. I encourage everyone to ask questions via the Q&A window, and our presenters will try to answer them after their presentation. This webinar is being recorded, and the sessions will be made publicly available, including the slides, which will be available on the Council's Australia Conference website over the coming days. With that, let me introduce you to our first speaker, Mark Stickles, Executive Director of the POSI Supercomputing Center. Hi, Mark. Hey, hello, Brian. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, kicking us off again on uh, on this conference and for day two. And uh, I echo your uh, acknowledgements of all of the uh, the partners and uh, um, and speakers and uh, organisations that help bring this uh, together. So um, thank you to uh, to all of them. Um, look, it's a great uh, a great opportunity to speak uh, on this uh, day two of this uh, this conference. Um, I, um, Brian, in Brian's introduction, he acknowledged that we're also running an event uh, called PCON or the, the PACER conference uh, here at Pawsey. And uh, I know that um, in a room uh, behind me in our engagement space, there, there may be uh, 40 or so people watching, uh, watching this, uh, this stream um, as they're just uh, kind of midway through their lunch, uh, lunch session here in, uh, in Western Australia. So um, a shout out to all of uh, the uh, um, colleagues and the participants in uh, in our um, PCON conference. It's the first time we've had uh, an on-site uh, event um, of this nature in uh, um, in our new refurbished facility. So quite a bit of uh, excitement here at Pawsey, and uh, and great to see um, uh, the engagement uh, um, in this uh, in this important area of, of science and research supported by advanced supercomputing. We also have some colleagues participating in that event. Uh, uh, in, a, in the hybrid mode, so we're continuing our efforts as you are through through the council here to uh, to reach a, uh, a national and international audience through um, through this online format. So, thank you again to the council for supporting uh, this sort of program and continuing to uh, um, advocate and to engage around such important issues. Um, I have a few slides to talk through and uh, uh, an introduction uh, for some perhaps to, to, to Pawsey and, uh, and talk through some of uh, the, the current status of Cetonix and, uh, and our ambitions uh, here in Australia to, uh, uh, to, to lead and to engage further around the, the future of high-performance um, computing. Um, so um, as I always do uh, for uh, presentations uh, and engagements, um, just making sure my slides are going to move. As I always do when uh, um, presenting here in, uh, in the wonderful uh, city of Perth uh, and in anywhere um, my colleagues would present across Australia, we would acknowledge the country uh, and the traditional owners of the land upon which we are privileged to, uh, to live and to work. Um, I'd like to acknowledge them in language. Uh, so I'll say, Nala Karic, Nunga Mort, Kayan Karak, Nijabuja. And uh, that is a very ancient language. Um, it's an acknowledgement of the, the Noongar people who have had uh, um, a representation of the world's longest uh, unbroken connection to, uh, uh, to country and a, a living culture. Um, that's an unbroken tradition of, of tremendous uh, um, endeavour, care and uh, curation of, of the wonderful country that, uh, that we live on. So I do acknowledge them as the traditional owners of this land and pay my respects to their ancestors and elders past, present and, uh, and future. I also acknowledge our partners and, uh, and uh, collaborators. We are, uh, Pawsey is a, a partnership of um, four West Australian universities and our national science organisation, CSIRO, and we get tremendous support from the West Australian government and the uh, Commonwealth Government of Australia through uh, a strategic research investment um, program that has sustained uh, significant um, uh, assets uh, and programs um, supported by Pawsey. 
Um, so really pleased to speak to you today um, for, for, for two reasons. Um, firstly, I'd like to provide an update on Satonix, which is our new supercomputer. And the wonderful artwork that you see on this, uh, on this slide is from, uh, is, uh, uh, from a, a regional artist, Margaret Whitehurst, and her artwork is on our system. Um, I'd like to talk to you about Satonix and tell you a bit more why, about why this represents such a significant step change for Pawsey and our ability to support Australian and international research. Um, but I also want to look a little further ahead um, at the opportunities that open up with Satonix um, in place and what it means for our ability to pioneer new kinds of computing today and what it means for our um, road to exascale tomorrow. Um, but first, before I uh, um, look forward, um, and for those that are not entirely familiar with our story, I want to step back a little bit and tell you a bit about who we are. I'll give a minute or second or two for my uh, slight animation to uh, to appear. So what you're seeing here is uh, is an image of uh, the namesake for Pawsey, Dr. Joseph Pawsey. Um, we're uh, named after um, uh, Dr. Pawsey, and I'll explain that in a in a few minutes. But in terms of our location, we're in Western Australia, and for those of you that might be watching from other states or other countries, that might seem a long way from um, from everywhere. But we like to think of it as a as actually a centre of scientific possibility. And Australia is a country where many of our advantages have traditionally been determined, particularly here in Western Australia, by our geology. But in the 21st century, industries and emerging areas of strength, such as space, remote operations and renewables, in those areas, it's our geography that is our advantage. So Western Australia is a leading location for sun, wind, wave and geothermal development. And it offers some of the world's most vast agricultural opportunities. And it is home to some of the world's most technologically developed industries. We're on the same time zone as about a third of the world's population. And we're as close to Singapore as we are to Sydney. A shout out to any of my colleagues who might be watching from, uh, from uh, New South Wales and Sydney. Um, we are home, or what we'll be home to, what will be the most powerful research supercomputer in the Southern Hemisphere. So I mentioned earlier our, our names taken from uh, Dr. Joseph Pawsey, who's pioneered research in radio astronomy some 70 years ago with colleagues, Dr. Ruby Payne Scott and an engineer, Lind Lindsay McCready. Um, and that underpins the development of some of the world's most exciting astronomical developments. Many of those are taking place here in Western Australia through the Square Kilometre Array um, radio astronomy project and its precursor projects that are currently operating up in the Murchison, um, several hundred kilometres north of, of Pawsey. So that's a little bit of scene setting about, uh, about Pawsey. As, a, as an organisation, we were launched as Pawsey almost a decade ago. But we've been an active collaboration of the research organisations here in Western Australia and the CSIRO, the National Science Organisation, for over 20 years. So we have a, a deep collaborative um, and regional uh, engagement model and uh, also um, offered as the um, one of the two national tier one supercomputing facilities through our efforts to support uh, universities and research organisations nationally. So I'll introduce Satonix to you. As you, just the animations work through. Um, so over the last two years, and we're entering into the, the third and the, the major delivery phase of this multi-year project, um, we've received a $70 million capital investment from the Australian government that's represented a significant step change, in our, step change in our capacity to deliver on our mission, which is to enable science and accelerate discovery. Um, Satonix, I think, also um, reaffirms the role Australian supercomputing has played in our nation and will continue to help our country punch above its weight in HPC. Um, Satonix is named after the Quokka, which is an iconic West Australian marsupial, marsupial and I think I might have featured it in one of my um, acknowledgements to speakers yesterday. Um, the larger version of that Quokka is actually in our engagement space um, now, and I do have a, a one on my desk almost uh, always, so it's that's the... Uh, that's what I'm talking about, about a half size model. And if you visit Pawsey, you can take one of these little um, uh, mascots home. Um, it is an iconic and much loved uh, West Australian um, emblem. And, uh, and we um, engage with it to reflect, I think, the, um, the positive engaged um, approach to things that we take here at Pawsey. Satonix itself is cloaked in the stars. So the wonderful artwork of Margaret Whitehurst, uh, Wadjuri Amaji Elder and, uh, and major uh, artist, 
um, her artwork is on our um, uh, on our system, and the original artwork is in our boardroom at Pawsey, and also uh, adorns uh, my tie, uh, and uh, and proudly um, um, draws um, our uh, acknowledgement to this uh, this wonderful artwork and and the vision of our. Um, First Nations people with respect to their interpretation and insight of of the sky and of the land and uh, of the the oceans of which they um, have spent um, um, tens of thousands of years um, um, engaged with. Um, we are very, very proud of Cetonix. And as you can see, it's uh, adjacent to, in this picture, um, Magnus, our other flagship system. And uh, Margaret's artwork is also on that system. Um, but they do re represent for us a, 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 an important connection to uh, uh, a very um, valuable and valued uh, culture. So well, I've talked a little bit about the outside of Cetonix, and I've realised this, this animation that's coming up doesn't actually show you the inside of Cetonix, but if you, uh, if you look at some of uh, um, our Twitter feeds and updates on the Capital Refresh, you'll be able to see some images of uh, the doors opening and uh, behind, the, uh, behind the cabinets of what is uh, now uh, um, uh, the pre-exascale architecture for us, but an exascale infrastructure in some facilities around the world. So it is very highly advanced on the inside of this, uh, of this system. And at its full operation, it's more than 30 times more powerful than our former systems, uh, Magnus and Galaxy. It's expected to, um, to deliver uh, up to about 50 petaflops of performance, and it'll be my, the most powerful research supercomputer in the Southern Hemisphere. And a further step change, uh, as foreshadowed by, um, by my, my colleague, um, Professor Sean Smith, yesterday, in Australia's national HPC capacity and continuing our um, trajectory towards exascale. Inside, it features more than 200,000 AMD uh, compute cores across 1,600 nodes, over 750 next-generation AMD GPUs, and more than 548 terabytes of CPU and GPU RAM connected by HPCs, HPCs, HPEs, slingshot interconnect. So while Cetonix as a supercomputer is the centerpiece of, um, of our capital refresh, our technology upgrade, um, it's uh, designed to accommodate, we've also undertaken several uh, other um, upgrades and infrastructure improvements that's to designed to accommodate the growth that we see now and into the future. So other elements of our system upgrades include the Acacia storage system, which offers 130 petabytes of online and offline storage. Acacia is a next generation um, improvement at Pawsey um, in storage and speed that's needed to manage the very data intensive research projects like the SKA and unlock the challenges that they offer at scale. Pawsey has also um, re-engineered its network architecture and it's moving from a monolithic single core router to a spine and leaf architecture with a 400 gigabit per second backbone and 100 gigabit links to host endpoints. This allows our cloud infrastructure Nimbus to connect, um, which has also been recently upgraded to the 100 gigabit network internally to connect at that speed to the Pawsey network. And this network's been designed to be expandable and to support the Ceph-based object storage um, platform as well as integration with Cetonix. And importantly, this will enable a tenfold increase in bandwidth from moving from 10 gigabits per second to 100 gigabits um, Ethernet. So as well as um, you know, scaling our ambitions, we need to scale the infrastructure to meet with the, the demands of managing um, the process intensity of very data-intensive um, compute. So that's an image of, that's a representation of not just an upgrade to Cetonix, um, but the almost root and branch refresh of Pawsey um, in storage, in um, networking, in our cloud infrastructure, in the ingest and operational support for radio astronomy projects. So our tier zero capability that we, uh, we address here at Pawsey as well as the national tier one infrastructure through uh, led by Cetonix. So it's been a significant multi-year project and I will pause and just commend the team at Pawsey who've done a tremendous job to, um, to deliver, uh, to plan and deliver um, and execute this, um, this technology uh, and architecture upgrade. And it should be acknowledged that we continue to operate through um, flagship systems such as Galaxy and Magnus, the delivery of you know, tier one science and tier zero support for radio astronomy um, as our business as usual. So it's been a tremendously um, uh, 
uh, challenging but also rewarding time, and I do acknowledge the efforts of my colleagues. And I didn't use the C word there of COVID, so I will acknowledge that we've done that through some very challenging times, and uh, I do applaud their efforts. So I've spent, uh, or the last comment around um, this before I start looking at the future is, is acknowledging, I think I've spent a bit of time talking about technology and uh, the, the, the refresh and technical specifications, but all of this has en enabled Pawsey to sort of underpin um, a refresh or a thinking about its, um, itself as an organisation. So Satonix does many things. It's a very powerful supercomputer and it will be the country's flagship tier one supercomputer as we move forward over the next few years. And it provides Australia with a significant and dramatic increase in compute power and opportunity. But it also, I think, positions us for what's to come. So our goal here at Pawsey is to be a hub for science, innovation and data visualisation, a centre where industries, researchers, SMEs, small and medium enterprises um, and others can gather and build new correct connections. In fact, with some of our leading researchers, we've got that happening about 50 metres away from me right now, and it's really exciting to, uh, to, see, um, to see what's possible there. We do look to provide leadership in the Australian HPC space and take a stronger position in advocating to government for the opportunities that come from a well-funded, robust and diverse high-performance computing offering. And we do have a plan to bring science and research together to get, sorry, we do have a plan to bring science and research together with technology application and I think an innovative mindset to create value for Australia and beyond. And Satonix is really the catalyst for all of those endeavours. Right, just doing a time check. So I'll start reimagining the future and start looking forward for us. So I've said that Satonix um, prepares us for the future of Australian HBC, and we believe the future is an exciting one. But what will it look like? I think for us, we think it's a future in which Australian research plays a vital role in unlocking new discoveries and solving intractable problems. And if anything, that's, that's been so evident through the experience of the pandemic globally that the vital role of, of researchers working with our advanced computational infrastructure and expertise and um, working with our um, frontline health um, workers and decision makers in, uh, in governments around the world, that we've seen the vital role that research and supercomputing can play in response to um, the, uh, the challenges of a pandemic. We also think that the future, if Australian research can play a vital role. It's absolutely important that the future is driven by a workforce of diverse, digitally ready, data savvy people who can build rich and rewarding careers in HPC roles in Australia. And I think Pawsey has an important play to help, an important part to play in supporting um, the development of our national workforce. We always try to advocate for this and we'll always strive to improve, but it's really important for all of us here at Pawsey that our future is inclusive that where the immense advantages offered, offered by supercomputing are available not just to big, big business, but to governments, communities, doctors and farmers, SMEs and entrepreneurs who can work in partnership with researchers to create and develop and deliver new thinking. Diversity and inclusion is really important in our field, um, to Pawsey and to me personally. It's not only the right thing to do, but it's also um, sensible and a good business case to uh, um, to develop a, a diverse and inclusive approach um, across to, um, access to technology um, in its development and its application. It really is um, uh, important on multiple levels. If you consider Australia's position right now and the digital opportunity that's available to us, the technology sector contributes about $120 billion to, GH, to, to GDP each year. This is data from a, a couple of years ago. If, however, we were able to catch up to global leaders um, around the world here through better adoption, industry investment, and in the development of a broader and larger technology sector, we could double that contribution every year by 2030. I'm just getting a glass of water, excuse me. So as I look forward, there are a couple of areas that I'd like to I guess, inspire or to stretch our thinking around. 
So we heard about this yesterday from uh, Marche and uh, Mariam, and I, I do apologise if Mariam's online for uh, making light of her comment about uh, palsy being a hostile environment, but I know she was reflecting on you know, taking the uh, the innovation of a quantum um, accelerator, a diamond-based synthetic accelerator out of a lab and putting it into the, the, the for her, the, the, the commercial environment and quantum brilliance, the commercial environment uh, of a data centre like, um, like Pawsey. Um, this relationship we've had with uh, Quantum Brilliance has been a tremendously productive one. So over the last year, I just acknowledge again, we were able to, in partnership with um, the Australian-German startup Quantum Brilliance, install the world's first room temperature diamond-based quantum accelerator on-site at a um, supercomputing facility. And we believe it's the first integration of room temperature quantum computing systems in a supercomputing centre around the world. And we're using it to demonstrate and test hybrid models of quantum and classical computing. So what we've done is to try and pair the quantum accelerator and supercomputing hardware on site at Pawsey. And for anyone that's watching this that didn't see the presentation yesterday, um, it'll be available. And I highly recommend uh, uh, watching that presentation uh, when it's made available by um, HBCAI and our colleagues there. Um, we haven't just focused on the technology, but we've worked with uh, industry and research organisations in a partnership program called the Quantum uh, Pioneers Program, and we're working with researchers to develop cutting-edge quantum applications in machine learning, logistics, defence, aerospace, quantum finance and quantum research. That's with universities and industry from different corners of Australia. Importantly, quantum Computing requires a new set of skills. So we're working with a local university, UWA, to um, support their education and outreach programs to upskill researchers and students, ensuring they're ready for a quantum future. Quantum technology is expected to deliver Australia a $4 billion in economic value and create 16,000 new jobs by 2040. And we really do want to play a role here at Pawsey in helping to lead Australia on that journey. There is a reason I number my pages. Now they match up with my slides. So um, this is a hybrid presentation here in, in my office. I've got a screen and I've got uh, analog, if you like, uh, paper in front of me as well. Um, so uh, my next major advance, uh, so I reflected on quantum computing, but my next major advance on the horizon is the square kilometre array. And it's one of the fundamental reasons that Pawsey exists is to support this globally ambitious um, project, which is helping, I think, to reshape our, our view of the universe now, I don't know if anyone noticed or reflected what was that first image on my opening slide. Um, it, it may have looked like a little slice of salami or chorizo if you, uh, um, if you sort of glanced at it, um, but I do promise that it's not. Um, it's actually a highly detailed image of a supernova, a remnant supernova, a dying supernova that was created using data from 36 radio telescopes um, operated through CSIRO, the ASCAP radio array um, in the Murchison. So several hundred kilometres from here, um, stream the data and process the data at Pawsey. And it's one of the precursor projects alongside the Murchison Widefield Array for the uh, um, Square Kilometre Array project. Now, the Square Kilometre Array is a globally ambitious super science initiative that, uh, that over the course of the next few years will start the, the construction and in, in implementation of an array of 131,000 antennas across a 65 kilometre sort of baseline in the, um, uh, in the Midwest of Western Australia, several hundred kilometres from Pawsey. It will also include the installation of different radio antenna um, arrays uh, at a different frequency in South Africa, um, all led through an intergovernmental effort, um, a multi-billion dollar inter intergovernmental uh, organisation called the Square Kilometre Array Observatory. Australia is one of the um, uh, core uh, countries that are participating in the SKA and Pawsey's um, some of the uh, key infrastructure and expertise that's been contributed by the Australian government to um, support the development of the Square Kilometre Array project. But back to my chorizo. Um, what's so special about this image um, is that it was created almost as soon as Satonix was installed. This is just phase one of Satonix. We're in the process of scaling um, and colleagues, uh, sorry, colleagues are working on the uh, 
a preparation for the arrival of the balance of the system over, over coming weeks. But this image was produced um, almost as soon as Cetonix was, uh, was switched on and demonstrates the results that we can produce with our enhanced capability. Faster, more detailed insights, working in partnerships with our scientists, matching their aspirations with our own technical insights, capability and domain expertise. It's a very positive sign for our ability to process data and scale with speed previously unheard of, which stands us in good stead as we look towards the SKA and the 500 million gigabytes of data it is due to produce each year. It may even be more than that. I think it could be closer to 600 million gigabytes of data. So hundreds and hundreds of petabytes to be processed and stored and distributed then through a regional network of um, science, uh, an international science community. So an incredibly ambitious, globally significant um, scientific endeavour that requires at its heart um, supercomputing and massive data expertise to and performance to uh, support. So our advanced data, data storage system and the high-speed networking we've implemented here at um, Pawsey will support our work into the future and particularly this, the SKA project. So I'll just move to the next... So while I've talked about two, two sort of future-looking um, initiatives for Pawsey around quantum and around the SKA, they're two of our, our key um, aspirations and some uh, strategically important areas of uh, activity um, that we are inspired through the implementation of Cetonix to support. Um, there is, um, I think, um, no boundaries to the potential for high-performance computing, supercomputing, um, at, uh, at the scale that we, uh, we offer through um, Cetonix. So I've talked about quantum computing, our understanding of the fundamental origins of the universe. They're both significant projects that will change our understanding of science, but they represent a fraction of the fields in which we can make a difference. And there is a temptation to see supercomputing or high-performance computing as purely about scientific inspiration or even the stuff of science fiction. But HPC helps at the universal scale, the planetary scale, local scale, and increasingly at a human scale. Um, our role is to bring the critical infrastructure, the expert staff, the sector knowledge, and the focus needed to solve pressing problems in every field. And that's something which in honestly inspires me every day when we come to work at, uh, at Pawsey, that our aspirations do extend towards some fundamental understandings about the origins of the universe to tackling you know, globally significant climate um, and pressing issues around our climate, to look at issues around energy and regional um, um, environmental issues, and to look increasingly at human scale challenges. Um, and we, we take some key lessons out of our response to the pandemic here, as I alluded to earlier. So we do empower world-class research in areas such as atmospheric science, fluid mechanics, plant biology, oceanography, climate modeling, and geoscience. And if I go back after this presentation into the, the engagement space at Pawsey and I've missed anyone's key discipline, my apologies. Um, I'll update the list uh, for the next time I get to give this presentation. Um, but as we see Cetonix and the architecture behind the platform um, as being critical in addressing the most significant research problems faced by the world today, um, sorry, and we do see Cetonix and the architecture behind this platform as being critical in addressing the most significant research problems faced by the world today, whether that is in climate change or coronavirus, the drying of continents to the warming of oceans. So I'll put out a pitch for some, for actually I'll put out a pitch for all of the HPC wire um, People's Choice nominees. I know there's some for Pawsey and I know we can't vote for our own, so I'll advocate for others. But uh, there's some amazing case studies of the um, impactful science and research that's supported by supercomputing around the world. So a plug to, uh, to our colleagues at HPC Wire and, uh, and their efforts um, to, uh, to advocate on, on our behalf. So while I speak about you know, critical issues, I've mentioned climate. Um, the energy question is something that is very important to us here at Pawsey. So like the rest of the HP sector, and in fact, industry worldwide, we have challenges of our own that we need to address. And one of the most important of these is the environmental impact um, of our work. And Pawsey is working hard to reduce its impact now through measures, through measures such as um, use of renewable energy and in geothermal cooling. 
we're also um, very aware that energy efficiency is critical still to our social license and in the future, and the response will be greater still. You can see from this slide that there's a number of projects that we've undertaken over the last 12 months um, that go back to the uh, looking at the original design and operation and functionality of our building to some of the um, reviews of the Cadle review of our use of the aquifer beneath Pawsey to provide the cooling um, water for our systems um, to advanced work in looking at uh, vibration and EMF monitoring and assessment as we supported the installation of the uh, quantum accelerator here at Pawsey. We have some other initiatives around solar and, uh, and we do our, um, our exploring um, battery and other novel technologies. So we're looking at how we can complement the other industries in our area through the use of symbiotic technologies, such as the capture of heat for other uses, the use of battery technology, and through novel, novel options such as hydrogen power. And we're very keen to, and open to collaborate and to engage with other uh, industries and organisations and peer centres um, in initiatives in this area. We also need to tell the story of how HPC can avoid emissions, if you like, in the real world, whether that's through the advances of our research and development colleagues um, that improve the efficiency and the use of things like digital twins and virtual labs that avoid the need for us to create and invest in the physical prototypes. The ability of our virtual lab functions can actually be uh, a positive impact when it comes to uh, energy and, uh, and the carbon cycle. This is an area we all have to get right if we're to continue to enjoy the support of our stakeholders into the future. So as I close, or I move towards closing my presentation, I look forward and, and, and reflect on the path to Exascale. And we understand the importance here at Pawsey, and we do with our, with our peer colleagues at uh, NCI, the importance of, it to, of this to Australia to build Exascale capacity. Um, even though it has been this year that the first computer in the world has officially passed the exascale mark, this goal has been something we and the rest of our colleagues in the Australian HBC community are also working towards. Australia's national digital research infrastructure strategy is an important process, and we need to ensure that Pawsey and NCI's efforts, investments and strategies continue to align. Excuse me. Um, one aspect of uh, our contribution to this goal is to be ensure is to ensure that our architecture here is at Pawsey is able to scale. We have collaboration agreements with the CSC Centre in Finland, which is developing Lumi, which is a pre-exascale machine for processing um, you know, massive data um, in Europe. And we also have relationships with national labs uh, in the US um, that share our architecture, but on a on a larger scale scale skill, a larger scale still. It's very important here in Australia that we do have these relationships, not just for knowledge exchange, but to provide pathways and opportunities for our researchers to uh, to collaborate and to uh, to optimise their their code and their and and support the development of their science, and similarly to provide uh, opportunities for uh, um, Aussie to develop career pathways and uh, improve the uh, the pool of talent that can um, work in HPC and supercomputing in Australia. So while we might be on the first rung of the ladder to exascale here um, at Pawsey, we're arguing, or I'm trying to argue, that it's the same ladder um, that is some of the biggest supercomputing facilities here in the world. So reaching exascale also requires us to tell our story and, um, and the asset and its relevance of HPC in Australia. So I'm really pleased to have had that opportunity in my to have that opportunity in my role at Pawsey, and also I've recently been appointed to the National Quantum Advisory Committee, and, and I'm also fortunate to sit on the board of Science and Technology Australia. So in all of these roles, I'm able to advocate for HBC in Australia, and to continue to make the case to our policymakers and leaders of the importance that we continue to punch above our weight. We invest in our national capability and promote the skilled workforce that we empower. As you can see from the slide that is in front of you now, um, we, um, we have, um, I'm promoting here the, the, the wonderful cohort of summer interns that we have um, had through Pawsey. Um, there is an important need to diversify the STEM education and career support um, pathways um, in this area. And it's something that we, and I know our colleagues at NCI are very um, committed to, uh, to support to create rich and rewarding Australia-based jobs, to attract young people here into the fields that will help shape 
our future and telling our story here is vital. We do see the importance of telling our story more broadly. We're very much a, a mission-led organisation, not money-led, and we need to share the work we are doing with the community that supports us through the funding and investments and, and partnerships in research that we empower. So at Pawsey, um, we're very proud to be powering the vision for Australian supercomputing, and we look forward to telling, telling the story um, and doing so for many years to come. Um, thank you. I think I'm closing there, and, uh, and I'm happy to take uh, any questions and to uh, um, uh, thank again the, uh, the, the organisers of the conference and uh, co-conveners at, at NCI. But thank you. Thank you, Mark. Great presentation. Great way to start off day two. Just a reminder to everyone that you can use the Q&A function or the chat function at the bottom of your screen to be able to ask any of our speakers questions. Let's give a moment to see if uh, we get anything in. Uh, Mark, just uh, just curious, I mean, we're getting to net zero, right, is, is top of mind of a lot of uh, uh, government institutions. I think this is, this is a big, heavy topic for us at our UK conference um, with uh, some net zero panels uh, from various universities within the DRAC system on, on some of the items that the UK government is requesting of them to figure out what's happening in Australia in, in terms of uh, the government involvement here. Um, look, it's a, it's a really important question. Um, there's a number of, um, number of strands in response. So there's a, there's a critical technologies program that's being developed by the Australian government to, um, to look at optimal investment in future technologies such as quantum and supercomputing. Um, there's, um, there's moves in the business community to improve the, the conditions for um, you know, business activity and, and, and reaching um, uh, net, I mean, net zero. Um, and there's a number of research initiatives that are looking at advances and accelerating um, renewable technologies uh, and in, in the West, particularly close to Pawsey, uh, advances in battery technologies and uh, um, uh, efforts to take what's been a, a very significant you know, resource endowment we hear it, have in Western Australia that supports the, um, the implementation of renewable energy, but to actually translate that into, uh, into benefits that we can adopt more quickly here in Western Australia and therefore in, in the nation. So it's, it's almost everywhere you turn, there are opportunities here, and uh, I think um, we see ourselves as being able to uh, to partner and to uh, and to I think plan. Or in fact, one of the reasons we've gone the architecture that we have was the the, the significant improvement in in energy efficiency in the in the hardware, but also work very closely with our researchers to optimize the code and to um, manage our system to 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 improve its energy efficiency, its its efficient use of the the system itself. So there's kind of from the individual researcher using our systems being as efficient as possible right through to some macro macro drivers in Australia that we, um, we, we're kind of touching most of those in some form or another. Yeah, I would have to say code optimization is a big one for sure. Um, you know, Addison, uh, <laughs> I know uh, I, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh, any questions you might have here for Mark? Uh, you know, one, one thing I'd like to just get your thoughts on since we're talking net zero when you look at the debate over the importance of the top 500, right? Do, do you think you see more eyeballs on the green 500 than the top 500? I think that's a question for both of you, actually. I, I do think we're seeing more eyeballs on green 500 than we used to more on green 500 than on top 500. That's a high bar. I don't think we're there yet, but uh, <laughs> it is something that I think we're, we're getting increased uh, attention to, and I'll let Mark answer that before I ask Mark a question. Uh, well, firstly, um, props for you, Addison. You're, it's, it must be early hours of the morning almost or approaching that. So uh, uh, We're still for... late night. We'll tick over to early morning but by the time I start presenting. Okay. Well, you're looking very, uh, very well for such a, for such a late evening. Um, uh, look, uh, I, I'm going to confess my 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 leaning or my bias is towards um, is towards energy efficiency. I think our social license is fundamentally um, uh, important um, uh, to many, um, and, and I reflect that the top five hundred is is important for us to to benchmark ourselves at any particular point in time. 
but we won't distinguish ourselves. Our, you know, our colleagues in, in Japan and our colleagues in, in national labs do have significantly more investment and, and different drivers for achieving the scale that they've achieved um, um, and applaud their efforts uh, over the last uh, year or two. Um, I think we've got to look at what we do with the, the 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 valued investment we have here in Australia and some of the novel science and scientific challenges and our ability to collaborate and partner means that I, I'm going to pitch for uh, our science and our impact more than I will our ability to, to stay, whether it's in top 10, top 20, top 50. So, um, But green measures increasingly um, are what's driving stakeholders in this area. And so very, very important for us. So I'm having it a bit both ways, but uh, I know it's uh, it's efforts that we can't um, can't lose sight of. Answering it both ways makes you a perfect analyst there, Mark. You've got to leave yourself all the wiggle room you can. I liked your presentation and I appreciated that you were talking about uh, the importance of Australian research and bringing up those technologies. But then you also talked about being in the same time zone as a third of the world's population. We're seeing increase in really national sovereignty initiatives with regard to technology uh, with respect to the US and Europe, the EU, I should say, and Japan and China. How's that affecting you? We're used to thinking of the scientific community as somewhat borderless. And I, I think that's becoming less and less true, potentially. Uh, you know, how, how does that affect your your current plans and your future outlook? Yeah, look, great question, and I'm going to have a foot in both camps as well. I think we we um, uh, we are neighbours to the um, the regional uh, office for the Square Kilometre Array organisation. That's a that's a multi country, intergovernmental, multi decade commitment to to work together on a on a globally significant science project. And I think many of our science colleagues uh, absolutely support. You, you know the, the natural tendency to collaborate and to and to work together um, across borders, um, and that's um, and if you've I've worked in universities and and the like for almost thirty years, and uh, you, you're never you, you're always impressed and and surprised you'll discover some new collaboration or partnership or opportunity. That's just that's just a, a natural part of um, discovery and science. Um, but it, but increasingly, um, we are looking at sovereign capability. So I think we we do have to be able to walk and chew gum in this space. We do have to build our expertise and to look at sovereign assets. And so building in our national digital research strategy, um, the important role that the Tier 1 facilities play in Perth and Canberra, so either side of East Coast, West Coast, for those that are outside of Australia, um, that we work with other um, sort of emerging major HPC facilities in in, in Australia, in in our climate authorities, where the, you know meteorological authorities, in some of our resource um, authorities, and in um, defence and security um, domains. So I think that's increasingly becoming more knitted together um, in countries, um, and uh, and we need to. Um, but I would still advocate for the need for um, a collaborative, you know. Things that we tackle are beyond borders. They are important to the planet. They're important to communities and people. And uh, I think um, I still aspire to, to to support that effort. So um, that's that became a little bit of a personal commentary. Then I think at the end, but uh, it's it's why I talked about being mission led. I mean, we we do we do some really cool things here, um, and I'm always impressed by when we meet our researchers and scientists and the sort of things that they. Uh, they tackle um, and in, inevitably they work on collaborative ways and they do work across borders. So I think it's something that will be, will re, re, will rebalance over time. Thanks, Thank Addison, you, for that question. Uh, I don't, uh, oh, actually, I got something that just came in. What could industry be doing better to help you meet these challenges? Um, good question. Thank you. Um, thanks, Greg. Um, we, our, in, our, our universities and so I do work with industry, so we've supported industry projects in the past, but we've perhaps been the the partner one step removed rather than more directly engaged with industry. And one of the opportunities of Cytonix is that the the 
step change in capacity for us and also the support that we've got from our core partners of the universities in CSIRO um, provides us with an opportunity to do more work with industry. Um, it's not industry, I'm going to say, good to see my colleague Stuart's just popped up because it's a great segue for um, for Stuart. What we do here would would still work in the area of discovery science. It would ne still need to have applications beyond that that would be better served by the commercial um, HPC providers such as such as Doug that we'll hear from later today. So there is a place for us to work more so with industry and we have the capacity to do so, but I'm going to try to frame that around the need that it's still discovery science and it's still, it still has a, a kind of frontier application or emerging areas because there's a place that we work alongside um, commercial providers and, uh, and the you know, expert, expert commodity services that are provided by, um, by, by a range of providers in that area. I'm not sure if um, I, I should say, if, I'm not sure exactly what the view is for that, for our audience, but uh, um, in panelists view, um, Stuart, the CTO of, um, um, of Doug Limited has just popped up. So that's why I was giving him a shout out. <laughs> yeah, he turned off his camera. Um, <laughs> but we all know that the, 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 the white space is orange space uh, at Doug and it's, it's instantly recognizable. So, uh, um, as, and uh, um, yeah, we'll look forward to Stuart's presentation a little later. And I know Stuart's presentation to give him a bit of a warm up is um, really also trying to address um, gr green and efficiency and energy and, and some of the advantages of why this sort of investment is, uh, is made in Western Australia. You got to be on your toes, Stuart. You never know if you're a panelist when Brian's going to call on you, whether it's your turn or not. You better be uh, paying attention and camera ready. <laughs> I got more surprises for you, Addison. Stay tuned. Bring it. <laughs> All right, uh, Mark, thank you so much for starting us off on day two. Really appreciate Posse support. Um, couldn't really have done it without you and Karina and Adita. They, they've been fantastic to work with. Really appreciate their support.